Now, there's also a story about Putin. <clears throat> he has a war on rap. And although he said things about it being part of the culture and therefore they should support it, that apparently the Russian government is acting against rappers and rap music. To which I say, at what point do you get to treat language as a medical problem or a social problem? Does language, and let's say music in particular, does it ever rise to the level of being dangerous for society? Um, I'm going to say something that you're all going to hate. You're all going to hate this. Probably half of you will never come back again. In our country, rap music has to be legal because it's just baked into our free speech thing. It has to be legal. But, in my opinion, um, there is a certain cultural, you know, message that comes with rap music that is uh, terribly harmful for people. Terribly harmful. Now, when I was young, and uh, thinking way back when Al Gore's wife, Tipper, Tipper Gore, tried to get um, music, I guess there were records at the time, records and CDs, were, she was trying to get them labeled if they had offensive stuff in it. So that it, as a consumer, you would at least know if this music had offensive things in it. And I think she largely succeeded in that because music is kind of labeled now, isn't it? And at the time I said to myself, you know, I was probably 12 or whatever I was. I thought, oh my God, old people, old people are so funny. They think that if I listen to this music, I'm going to, I'm going to start acting differently, but I'm not that dumb. I know the difference between music and something that matters. <clears throat> I'm not going to be influenced by this music. And then I grew up and I studied hypnosis and I studied persuasion and I studied influence and at this point it is completely clear anybody who anybody who thinks that advertising works you know if you even understand that advertising works of course the music changes children if you're 10 years old and you're listening to rap music because your older sibling has it it is absolutely programming you <clears throat> From a scientific perspective, I mean, I suppose you could run some tests on this, but I don't think you'd have to wonder how the tests would come out. It absolutely makes a difference. Um, and does it make a difference to the point where it could kill you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Rap music, uh, this will be the part that gets taken out of context. Rap music is lethal. Just not to many people the vast majority of people will not have a negative experience for music. But there are a lot of people on the edge. And those, those people on the edge, it could make them deadly. It could make them hurt themselves. It could cause them to do drugs they wouldn't have done, to live a lifestyle they wouldn't have lived, to get a tattoo they wouldn't have tried to get, to speak in a way that they wouldn't have normally spoken. I, I watched, I watched uh, white kids uh, turn into black culture with saggy pants and speaking the way they hear on the music, etc. I've watched I've watched rap music completely re reprogram kids, completely change their entire cultural DNA. I've watched music do that. In you know, um, somebody said they would not allow their kid to listen to rap music. You really don't have a choice. <laughs> Your kids are going to listen to all that stuff. They're going to see every movie. They just go to their friend's house. If, if your kid has a smartphone, your kid is listening to rap music. There's no way around it. So here's the thing. In the United States, I do not suggest that we try banning rap music. Just because it's impossible. And it would be too far off of our cultural um, preference, I guess, for free, free speech and expression. But... It's dangerous as hell. Rap music is absolutely killing people. No doubt about it. But you know what else kills people? Cars, sports, bicycles, swimming pools, slipping in the shower. 
All right, we live in a world where all kinds of stuff is dangerous, uh, and we don't have, we don't eliminate all the things that can kill people. Yeah, weed. I don't know how many people have died on weed. It's closer to zero. So in the United States, the you know the debate, if you will, is sort of settled in the sense that we've decided we'll, we're just going to let all that stuff happen. But in Russia, when they're saying, should we stop this stuff? They're not wrong. <laughs> you know, it, if you gave me, if you told me there's a culture in which they're already accustomed to not having free speech. Since they don't already have free speech, let's say it's China, let's say it's Russia. If they don't already have free speech, would they be worse off to be denied a certain kind of music if it actually makes society better? I don't know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not as obvious as it seems. Uh, in this country, we have such a investment in free speech, there's no way around it, right? It's going to be the way it's going to be. Uh, I don't recommend changing it. But it is unambiguously, absolutely corrosive to society. And if Russia or China do not want their society to be corroded and to become a drug culture like the United States, they might want to get rid of the influences that turn your culture into a drug culture. And rap music does that, absolutely. So I would, you know, if I had to put a number on it, let me guess. I'm going to guess how many people in the United States are killed every year by rap music. Probably 20 to 50,000, maybe. If I had to guess... How many people die just in the United States per year because there is rap music? Now, I'm saying rap music, but I'm real, I mean the, the cultural attachments that come with that. So that what comes with rap music is uh, you know, the drug culture that comes with it. Um, and maybe the, you know, the, uh, the anti-establishment sort of culture, maybe you get a tattoo, you sag your pants, you can't get a job, it changes your whole life, um, your life trajectory. Uh, maybe you're more likely to carry a gun because it's part of that culture. I would say, yeah, 20 to 50,000 people. And it's just a guess, right? If, if there's somebody here who says, my God, Scott, that couldn't possibly be true. You know, it's a lower number than that. I wouldn't argue too hard. I'm just giving you my best opinion based on based on what it does what it does to people in general and how some of them it might push them over a line. I'd say twenty to fifty thousand a year. But how many people die die in cars? More. Um, Scott, you might be going down a slippery slope. Well, the thing that keeps me from going down the slippery slope is that in the United States, it's still unambiguously legal. And I don't, I don't recommend changing that. It's completely legal, and I agree it has to stay that way in this country. Uh, it's not the genre. There's, a, there's Christian rap. Well, okay, I, I hear what you're saying, that rap can be separated from you know, the culture, but you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Would you say rap is a poison? Um, no, not in the technical sense. I would say that rap, um, well, let me put it in a larger context. We have, we have a cultural preference for saying that thoughts, even if they're damaging thoughts, are in a different category than physical health problems. So if you break your arm, everybody says that's a health problem. But if you get a negative thought that ruins your life, nobody says that's a health problem. Because you're otherwise mentally healthy, you're, you don't have mental illness, you just have a bad idea that set you on the wrong path. So let's say your bad idea is that you should become, um, you should join a cult and murder yourself, kill yourself. Let's say the bad idea is that you should become a suicide bomber. Let's say the bad idea is that you should cover yourself with tattoos before you're old enough to go get a job, right? So these are ideas which could damage people's 
potential. And by the way, I love tattoos. I'm, I'm a big fan of tattoos, but it's unambiguously true that it could hurt your job prospects because um, other people don't like tattoos. So uh, we make that artificial, um, that artificial distinction between an idea that can kill you and a physical problem like a virus. And I'm not sure that's warranted. Maybe it has to be that way, but it's a it's sort of an artificial, you know, distinction.